Let me first ask you um, what you think about yesterday's violence. It was fascinating to watch the S&P hit a new record high as Trump supporters stormed and, and broke into the U.S. Capitol building. Um, and yet, I guess it's because of the, the Democratic wins that the market continued to rally. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the protests themselves, while very sad, are a very small part of a much bigger issue, which is the age of disinformation, which has really been at the heart of a number of the populist wins in recent years, whether that be in the UK or, or in the US, for example. In terms of the, the equity side, yeah, you're going to get more fiscal support in the short term. There'll be concerns once we get into 21, 21 20, 22 around taxation and, and potential changes there. But in the short term, this is clearly a positive. Biden's been very clear that a, a vote for the Democrats in Georgia was a vote for $2,000 checks. Let me ask you about how far you think, you know, those stimulus checks you referenced, that's part of the fiscal stimulus boost that we might expect to see following this, uh, this Biden win in the Senate then. Uh, but they're, on the other side of the ledger, there had until, until now been those voices that mentioned, you know, regulation and taxation as being downsides. It seems that... U.S. equity markets want to rebound today, want to, want to move higher today, or to continue moving higher, I suppose, on the blue suite, rather than focusing on those, those other more negative, uh, negative for, for, for assets measures that could be brought forward. Yeah, and I think that's a, lot, a lot of that is around the ordering. So the, the fiscal boost comes in the short term. That will help support employment. It will help uh, support consumer spending. It reduces some of the tail risks around the virus in, in Q1, particularly with the emergence of these strains with a, a much higher level of uh, infectiousness. Um, but then beyond that, yes, there'll, there'll be the taxation issues. But markets generally struggle to look that kind of 12 to 18 months forward for potential action. And unless that gets firmed up as to what the Democrats might do, then I think we can expect to see that the positive side helping equity markets in the, in the short term, as, we, as we've seen. Maybe just as interesting, of course, is the bond market as well where we've seen that big move, where really the, there are some concerns as to how this will all get paid for. But certainly in the short term, this helps remove some of those tail risks around the consumer. John, you know, uh, it was particularly disturbing for me to watch yesterday as an American, um, certainly the biggest act of violence on the U.S. Capitol since um, your people invaded in the 1800s and, and lit it a fire. My immediate thought was... Um, what are the safest assets to buy? I looked at Bitcoin rallying up through $37,000, but of course there's volatility. I looked at gold and it actually had dropped in value um, as the protests really kicked off yesterday. What do you buy when you're concerned about, um, you know, serious geopolitical downfalls in, in, in some of the most important societies in the world? Yes, I, I think that has got more difficult because of the, the number of the, the government bond markets that now have such low yields. So particularly in core Europe, there's really no yield left. Uh, you know, the, in Germany, yields are uh, below the, the ECB deposit rate all the way out to 10 years. I mean, gold's an interesting one because it's been talked a lot about as a, a, a tail risk hedge, but it really only hedges one specific tail risk, which is that kind of hyperinflation uh, kind of money printing tail risk. If you actually look at the behavior of gold in the last few years, it's had a positive co behavior with equities. So it's actually tended to go up when equities have gone up. So it's had a, a correlation to equities of about 0.4 over the last year. So really pretty positive. And that's really when you think about what drives gold, it tends to be dollar weakness. Dollar weakness tends to be good for global equities because it provides a kind of stimulus on the, uh, the, the global financing conditions. It makes it cheaper for emerging market countries in particular to borrow. And then, so the, there's gold drops, that tends to be positive for equities, it's positive for gold because it's quoted in dollars. And then secondly, it's US real rates that tend to be the second biggest determinant. And again, with nominal yields there so low, there's a real chance that it's mainly the inflation side of that equation that drives the price of gold. And actually, inflation expectations tend to rise when equities rise. So I would say that gold's a diversifier, but I think its perception as a tail risk hedge really only works in one specific scenario and much less effective for, for kind of um, concerns over a slowdown or concerns over 
uh, other types of, of disruption. But I think you're still looking really at, at ordinarily government bonds. The issue there uh, being the, the Democrat clean, uh, clean sweep on the, the same night where clearly that extra spending uh, creates a problem. So I do think portfolio constructors are having to get more and more innovative in the way that they, they look to buy their hedges. Uh, a lot of our hedges, particularly our government bond hedges, are now actually in Asia Pacific, so Australia, Korea, uh, New Zealand, where there are still somewhat high yields and still more potential for risk mitigation, as well as balancing out the, the geopolitical risk by region, rather than focusing it all in Western markets in the US and in Europe, actually moving it over into Asia Pacific gives us more of a, a geographical split in, in our protection.